Lydia Lewis, as I live and breathe. Or am I to call you Mrs. Thorne? You are no longer in the army? She blurted. That is correct. I sold my captain's commission nearly three years ago, when I returned from war and learned you were missing. Lydia bobbed her head in distracted acknowledgement. How did you find me? Jacob took the magazine rolled up under his arm, shaking it out so she could see the title. The Gentleman's Magazine ran an interesting article recently. Jacob opened the magazine and found what he was looking for. His Grace, the Duke of Harmsbury, renowned for his estimable, charitable work, recently oversaw the renovations and restaffing of the Harmsbury House for Children, etc., etc., appointing his own esteemed housekeeper, Mrs. Lydia Thorne, as the director of the home. You remembered, Jacob scowled, tossing his head in a front, which set his coppery waves bouncing as if they had a life of their own. I remember everything. I remember that we played make-believe as children by the river, and your title was Princess Lydia of Thorne. I remember we read each other poetry and novels in the meadows when I came home for breaks from Eton. I remember how you looked, what you wore at our anvil wedding, when that blacksmith presided over our hurried vows in Gretna Green. I vividly recollect the letters you sent me when I was shipped out to war with a French madman. How I prayed to survive my wounds so as not to abandon you, as I lost consciousness on the blood-soaked grounds of Waterloo. My memory of fighting a fever in a field hospital for weeks, while awaiting word, any word from my wife, is etched indelibly on my mind. I also can't help but recollect the exact moment when I returned home and was told of your midnight disappearance at the end of June 1815. So, yes, I recognized your alias, and after years of searching, I finally worked out where to find you. Lydia stared at him with rounded eyes, her chest constricted in horror at the thought of Jacob injured. Until today, she had not been certain he had survived the hundred days after Napoleon's infamous escape from Elba. To see him in the flesh, to confirm that he indeed lived, filled her head with a riot of emotions. Predominantly light-headed relief that he was alive, well, and with no visible evidence of permanent injury marring his physique. Jacob grimaced as he looked away. Unfortunately, the one thing I did not remember was telling you fourteen years ago about how I attended school with Harmsbury, and that he was a kind and honourable man, a true gentleman. I only recently recalled, while reading this article, that I had stated that if I was ever in need, he was the one person other than you whom I would trust with my life. That, and of course, that he owed me a favour for tutoring him when he had difficulty with his Latin lessons, and that he was eager to repay the favour. If I had, in fact, remembered our conversation in your father's rose garden, I would have found you long before today. Lydia dropped her gaze to stare sightlessly at her entwined fingers, unsure what to say. Her day of reckoning had arrived.